Welcome back everyone to uh, Muscovy. It's been a while since I played this and I'm reaching the, about the end of what I'm going to do with Muscovy. I just need to defeat the White Horde and Lithuania and then I can form Russia. Uh, if we go ahead and look to that decision, we must have administrative technology of 23. Actually, we can already form Russia. Huh, really good. Uh, but anyway, I want to defeat the White Horde and Lithuania first, and then go ahead and do the rest. Now, um, let's take this mission, Incorporate Karachev, because we are already annexing them. So that's a pretty free mission. Then, uh, we're gonna go ahead and try to finish off the Korok first. Yeah, uh, and essentially, as I said last time, I really kind of just want to go ahead and until I, um, yes, uh, go ahead until I uh, finish forming Russia, and I defeat some enemies that are around here, and then I'm just gonna be, yes, I'm just gonna be leaving the rest, because of course it would just be strong Russia or, you know, however you want to see it, just running over everybody, or, in turn, collapsing upon itself. So last time I think we built a navy, right? We have an admiral, for some interesting reason. Uh, Poland's opinion? No. Rzev. So Rzev is under you. And you're... No... Wait, you do not have a truce with me. Really. But still, we can't really attack you. Because we'd have to fight Lithuania, and then we'd have to fight uh, Poland as well. And Danzig. And they'd be a co-belligerent. They will not be able to call in their own allies, okay. I forgot how many troops they have, actually. Let's see by total. Sort by total, and go down to Lithuania has 7,000. So we're gonna need to wait until our manpower is refilled. But Poland is low. We only have 5,000. Hmm. We could try to attack them. 7,000, 5,000 doesn't make too mighty of a force. We do have some money our treasury. And we are ahead in technology. But I am going to wait. We are ahead in technology. So that's pretty good, at least. Because we managed to develop so quickly... Wow, look at that. <laughs> that's a lot. A lot of stuff. Um, yeah, because we managed to develop so quickly, we are in a much better position than Russia was historically this time. Uh, or our manpower reserve needs to recover. Let's take that. Oh, White Horde declares war upon Trebizond. Well, that's not the biggest enemy ever. And you do not appear to have any more enemies, so... Nothing big. Bryansk. Can I... Oh, you're a vessel of Lithuania. Never mind. Would the, Teut the Teutonic Order join? No, because you're in debt. Really, now. Huh. Interesting. Well, I'm going to improve relations with you. Oh, um... Okay, um, although it can be hardly said that Muscovy is a pious nation, it is still unwise to show a complete disregard for the Orthodox faith, which is exactly what Daz did. In a very public manner, the Gap suspended true believers in the nation and exposed the limits of secularism. What shall we do? Show contrition or embrace? Show contrition. Yeah, that's not a good idea to go against the church. Even though they only have 50% church influence. Oh, you're also allied with Hungary. Not good. Not very good at all. And Scandinavia doesn't appear to hate me anymore. Which is very nice. We shall, however, rival Poland. 
because they're obviously going to fight us. Okay, very good. So our army is rebuilt. How much further can we go with our force limit? Three more units. Um, we have two cannons, three horses, six infantry. So out of 14, we would probably at least need eight infantry. Okay, core event level three. And then another horse. Then we need to upgrade our road systems, I think. Uh, this isn't a paved road network, so... It's gonna be very expensive, I think, to upgrade the roads, but we have a strong income, so we can do that. Of course, can't move because it's not... That's not being paid. Okay, good. Of course, corruption, which I really need to deal with. How expensive would it be to root out corruption? Very. Uh, would it actually do so? Yes, it would. Let's try to do it. It's worth the expenses. How about the estates? Uh, can we revoke any privileges? Yes, we can. Uh, relaxation of levy obligations. That's something that I'm looking to revoke. Because I want more manpower. The lesser nobles do not have anything we can revoke. Okay. We could get some money from the bourgeoisie, but that's not really in my interest right now. I just want to let them build up. And they accept the reforms. Good. Ooh, okay. So you declared war on Brandenburg. So you're at war with Brandenburg, Anhalt, and Saxony. Not too big, but probably really strong because it's developed German stuff. So Anhalt is 3,000, Brandenburg is 5,000, and Saxony should be down here. Saxony is... Saxony, Saxony, Saxony... Where are... where's Saxony? Okay, 3,000. So overall, 8,000. No match for Poland, actually. But they might lose lots of manpower sieging down fortifications. Yeah, they're already doing something like that. That's also a really strong Georgia. I wasn't expecting something like that. So, it would be nice if the White Horde decided to declare war on Georgia, because Georgia, how many troops do they have? They can probably resist quite a long time. Yeah, they have 8,000, so they're not too weak. Let's get some flames. I really like how Georgia's getting strong. The Caucasus is just a mess, of course, as it should be. Okay, at least Scandinavia. Ooh, Scandinavia could be getting an alliance, but we need to have a positive opinion of them, which we don't. Yeah, because they used pirates on us, so... Oh, no, more, more plague. Damn it. We could have a royal marriage. To at least prevent them from attacking me. Yes, let's do it. Also, that probably increases our opinion of them. Scandinavia is a human player and should never be trusted. What? No. <laughs> That's not how it works. Uh, yeah, okay. Good. Seems like things are just sailing, cruising along nicely. It's just that the Teutonic Order is such an unreliable ally. 
Which is probably why, in real life, nobody allied them. Ever. They weren't exactly good at making friends. And of course, the lesser nobles are disloyal. That's kind of annoying, but who knows. Let's see if we can... Oh, we cannot improve the roads. Never mind. Where can we improve the roads? Political crisis. Uh, um, we gain legitimacy every year. I don't want to lose stability. So, let's lose the legitimacy. Even though normally I do not like losing legitimacy. You can gain some legitimacy, but that's very expensive. Let's wait. Okay, I'm not sure why I know about that. <laughs> wait, what? Oh, Regency Council in Smolensk. Okay, so Poland's actually getting invaded and occupied. Gotta wrap the forces. Now, uh, our main opponent in this will be Lithuania, which by this time had been fighting Muscovy for like a hundred years. So, nothing new for us, technically. Wait, what? 12 supply limit. Really? Let's go to Holmski. Recall Diplomat. They've been fighting for, yeah, a long, long time. So, it wouldn't have been anything too weird for a war to break out, especially along this borderland. Learned about Ural. Wow. Uncolonized land. Yeah, we might have to colonize soon. Colonize Siberia. And we got stability! Excellent. Very good. And we can make more states. That is excellent. Uh, Galich or Bielo Ozero. I think Galich would be better, because it's more developed territory. And we cannot core of them? What? Why, did, why can't we not core them? Interesting. Very interesting. Anyway, uh, that is what? Monastic schools. Interestingly, that doesn't seem to improve education. Weird. Yeah, and the problem with Lithuania was that it was extremely, extremely decentralized, just like Poland. And just like, um, the Kievan Rus. So, essentially, the more centralized Muscovite state was just able to run them over. And this supply limit is just so very low. So let's split in half, I guess. And we'll rejoin our armies if need be. Uh, do we have more leaders? Yes, we do. We have, of course, Dimitri Danskoy. Okay, now we are, I think, fully ready. We shall attack Smolensk with the uh, objective to take Rajev. Yes. We shall let friendlies attach, of course. And the enemies have joined in the war. Uh, Bryansk is also in, which means that we are going to be able to take over their lands. Uh, for this war, I think we'll need our estates, though. Uh, the lesser nobles, I think, won't really give us a lot. First off, let's partially ask up to the greater nobles. Oh, uh, no, never mind. Just to get a ourselves a bit of extra forces. We took Tarpetsky, okay, good. Yes, so some of these are fortified, but they should be falling pretty quickly because we have artillery. Oh, damn it. Here comes the diseases.
It would be nice to know what's, you know, over here. Because I do not like, uh, I do not like not having any information on what is beyond. But at least Smolensk is falling really quickly. Okay, good. Very, very nice. Uh, you go ahead and move to Roslavsky. This has a fort, so we shall have to siege it down. Polatsk has a big fort, however. Uh, it's a level 2. Well, a little bit bigger, so we'll go for Minsk instead. Uh, okay, I can't go for Minsk because I'm blocked by Polatsk. Uh, so I'll just stay here. There we go. So at least Smolensk is occupied entirely. And our vassal can actually siege Bryansk on his own, which is exactly what I would like to see. And then we can take Chernigov, and the vassal can take Kursk. Nice. Pretty much all of our stuff is going to be captured. Then you go to seed bits. Because you can. Okay, so far we haven't seen any enemy troops, but that's going to change, likely. Uh, it should be said that when Muscovy was actually fighting, Lithuania. It was before the union with Poland. So, it fought a very, very weak, well, kind of weak. It was actually very strong, but a comparative with a weaker state. But since Poland isn't as strong as it is, it was actually, uh, historically, in Mayu and Taxes, it would seem, we can do it quite fine, and because we also grew much faster than Muscovy did historically. These lands around here were still a sort of um, hotspot for both Muscovy and uh, Poland into the 1600s. So nothing to be laughed at, actually. There we go. Especially the lands around the Dnieper. And because they were, uh, the, well, these two areas, of course, modern Ukraine and modern Russia, were separated so long into two different entities, into two different states. That's kind of the reason why. Uh, kind of the reason why Russia and Ukraine are quite different today in both culture and political history. Of course, Belarus is also kind of another uh, heap of business, but Belarus, you know, was never too important. Good, thanks. Thanks, Green Nobles. And clerical shortage. Our religious leaders are complaining of a shortage of clerics to fill vacant, fill vacant positions in Muscovy. Increasingly, it appears that people are not attracted to the rigors of religious life. The best and brightest are abandoning the ecclesiastical jobs in favor of secular ones. The root of the problem is simple. Though, uh, the people no longer consider the orthodox faith to be central for their lives. Okay. Hiring foreign priests and hiring between peasants. Uh. So we can either have a shortage of missionaries or a shortage of preachers. I'm going to go with a shortage of missionaries. Oh, here's Brandenburg. So they're sieging up some... Ports. Good job. Um, let's consolidate. Then I'll bring in another cannon. That should be enough to push the siege along. Is that fortified? No. So let's go occupy it. I wonder where the Polish army is. Must be somewhere. I'm guessing in the west, since uh, Brandenburg is falling under occupation pretty quickly. 
And I'm probably getting a lot of loot as well. Okay, there we go. Uh, so Brandenburg is pieced out. And now uh, Poles will be coming after me instead. So once these sieges are done, I'll try to keep my armies together. Because I do not want to get caught by surprise by a strong Polish army like that. Okay, I'll keep you there. I'll move you and you. I just hope that I can hold out until my reinforcements arrive. Okay. Yeah, they're coming in. I think I shall be able to hold out. Yep, there we are. So now my cannons can help out. They only have one cannon, I have two. And we have more cavalry. So we should be able to win quite easily. There we go. Where are they running? Well, far away. Uh, I don't think we shall be able to chase them. Oh, there they are. Uh, they're trying to run to Galicia. And that's a big Lithuanian army. I didn't expect that big of an army to show up. I only saw one man. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> that was not a good idea. Let's try to siege Jukia. How much can we get from them right now? Can I transfer you as a subject? Nope, not yet. Can I get territory straight up? Yes, I can. I can get a fair, fairly decent chunk, actually. Why can I not get Mstislav? Oh, the war goal prevents the province, because it's only... Technically only Russian provinces, but Mstislav is a Russian province. Weird. Um, so yes, that's 37. Force religion. I can't return cores, which is unfortunate. Of course, I cannot cancel subject. Of course, I can't release Kiev. Oh, that would release Kiev in Kursk. That could be advantageous. But uh, we gain more by just taking territory, and we can take Kursk later. Nah, it seems that we'll just have to take the money. Because we can't really go on fighting this war much longer. Okay, stability points. Thanks. Go back to Moscow. Which has a pretty strong supply limit, at least. And now we're coring a bunch of stuff. Very good. Who did you declare war on? Novgorod. Uh, we still have a truce. It's gonna finish in six years. Then once that's done, we'll just finish off Novgorod. Put them out of their misery. If Scandinavia doesn't do so first, which isn't all that good. When can we wear the royal crown? Oh, um, have a statesman. Can we have a statesman? Architect and inquisitor. No. I don't even know what. Oh, statesman. Right. Diplomatic relations and diplomatic reputation. So he's a statesman, right? Yes. We unfortunately do not have a discounted one. So now I think we can wear the, wear the royal crown. Yes. So we shall be promoted from principality to kingdom. Okay, very nice. We're still not an emperor though. Uh, sure. And we shouldn't be an emperor yet until 1480, technically. Or anyway, until Constantinople falls. In the Orthodox worldview in general, there could only be 
the Empire of Constantinople for a long, long time until, of course, it fell. So, uh, taking on the emperor, an emperor's title for a Muscovite at this point would have been pretty, uh, pretty, you know, uh, arrogant, I guess. I think I should get that cav merc out because he's expensive as hell. And eventually we'll have enough uh, manpower. Our Admiral, of course, died, but we don't need him anymore because we're not getting raided by the Scandinavians. <laughs> Interesting. Can we even pirate other people? No, I must have light ships to protect trade or privateer. Okay, never mind. And we're getting some more cores. Excellent. So that should increase also our manpower gain. The Kazem Khanate. So a minor noble from a neighboring Khanate has offered, offered us a deal. In exchange for allowing him and his retinue to resettle in Kazimov, he will provide us, provide us with military support. Huh. Okay. So we get the Kazem levies. And Ryazan gets the Kazem Khanate modifier. And we get a ton of feudal heavy cavalry, and we get the general Kazem Gengishid. This is actually a historical event. Now, um, around... yeah, about this time, uh, this uh, noble from the Horde decided to swear fealty to Dmitry Donskoy of Moscow. And that's actually the first time that a uh, Tatar swore fealty to a Russian. Now, this is kind of important because um, later Russian expansion in the East made great use of uh, tactics like this, essentially just incorporating local uh, magnets, local warlords into the Russian state. And in exchange for fealty, they'd of course give them protection into the big Russian state from their rivals. So of course, we're gonna accept. And we get a lot of heavy cap rate. Can we pay for that heavy cap rate? Is it... No, it's not above our force limit. Let's also get the rest of the infantry. Whew. No stability loss from the failed of execution. Nice. So now we're gonna have our army filled up, which is very good. We have 20,000 men. Very strong. And we can jump on Novgorod. Of course, this is kind of annoying that they took Alonius, but that's fine. They only took lands west of the Anyega Lake, or Anyega Lake. So nothing too major. The rest can still be ours. It's even Pamor culture. Uh, apparently it's East Slavic. I'm thinking that it's just uh, Russians who live near the White Sea. Even though there wasn't really much of a culture difference between Russians themselves. Uh, in Mayon taxes, they did split into Russian and Novgorodian. So there's Novgorodian culture. You know, I mean, Novgorodian culture wasn't really all that different from Russian culture, as we'd call it today, aka Muscovite. I don't know, I don't really know why there's a change in there. But oh, weird. And also, I forgot to um, tech up, because I'm very smart. What ideas can we do? Of course, military horse breeding and corporation cost reduction. Damn it. Greater nobles being disloyal, of course. You're still a vassal of Lithuania. You're still a vassal of Lithuania. Can we peacefully vassalize you? No, because I own your core provinces. And because you really, really don't trust me. As in, you really, really, really don't trust me. 
Understandable. Kind of. Um, still five years. What about the Horde? The Horde is still pretty strong. White Horde. Oh no, only 8,000. They have more in reserves. And they also are only at Tech 9. So now I think is the real time to go after them. But first, I'll wait until I get some manpower. Oh, uh, okay. I'll definitely put my troops on the border though. What about the main centers of board economy, I guess? Well, they have Kiev, which is one of their only cities. They have Alyeshe, which is also a city. Looks like it grew on the um, sort of estuary of the Dnieper. Uh, which makes a lot of sense. Essentially, this timeline's Odessa, I guess. Then there's... Uh, do they have anything here on uh, the Kerch Strait? No. Lania. And then, of course, Astrakhan. And uh, Sarai, the capital of the Golden Horde. Glorious Sarai. Now. Yeah, by this time, the Horde was actually fragmenting. And so it was much easier for the rulers of Moscow to come in and take them over. Uh, especially since uh, Astrakhan... Oh no, we lost our great general. And we have Kasim, uh, but he's not that good. So we shall kick him. <laughs> what about a second general? Can we get one from the estate? I remember that the Greater Nobles are disloyal, so most likely no. What about the Lesser Nobles? Can we do anything with them? No, we cannot. Let's get some more manpower from them. And yeah, we're gonna have to manually get a general. Now we should have a okay amount of army tradition, but it's unlikely that we'll get a good general from this. Yeah, indeed a very bad one. Should have kept Kasim. We have Kasus Belly on the board. Yes, we do. We have Conquest. Wait, what? Oh no, right, never mind. At least the rest lesser nobles accept everything. Good! The bourgeoisie is very loyal. That is amazing. Okay, at least the lesser nobles are also loyal. So everybody is getting to be loyal again. Yay. Uh, can't still demand any support from them, however. I really don't want to do that. Promoting lesser nobles to greater nobles doesn't seem to be very good. I could try to honor them. Get some loyalty. Unfortunately, I cannot do that for the greater nobles. Because they're still angry at me. But they have a very strong army, actually. They have 3 2 1 1. So they're gonna get three infantry, two, um, two horses, and a cannon. Of course, very good. Famine. Uh, yeah, that's really bad. Let's take some practical measures, but unfortunately, we can't afford the highest level of uh, relief. At least Smolensk has some city populations. However, uh, at this time, because of the famine... Let's see where the famine is. 
because of the famine, things aren't all that good. Uh, special map mode. Uh, what about... Is it rural population or economic? Nope. Um, economic indicators? No. Farming related data. Nope. Oh, right. Severe food shortage. Not good. Um, at least Moscow isn't having one. Looks like the famine's more in the east. Probably caused by what's happening in... Alphorod? I don't know. There's also terrible famine in... Yike. Literally, yike. Wow, they produce jewelry. Damn. That seems good. Still have a, a bit of martial law there. Not good. When can we annex you, actually? 18 years. Can we choose policies for our vassals? Tighter bond. Damn him. So he gains liberty desire, but that's fine because he's literally surrounded by There's nothing he can do. Uh, okay. Let's get some pain with Bohemia. Apparently they've been interdicted. Sure. Mm. Okay, so we can get the alliance of Scandinavia. Very good. Very, very good, because Scandinavia is pretty strong. And they're also gonna be quite good to help sort of cement our control of the Baltic. 